Hello, good evening, everybody. It is Thursday, December 27th, post Christmas. We're cleaning up after Christmas. Hopefully you had a great uh, Christmas time and Christmas day and Christmas Eve and Christmas tradition, or I should say holiday tradition for whatever your traditions are. Um, so we thought we'd have this, I think this will be our last show for the year. And so it has been, we were gonna do a, a 2018 roundup, um, but we decided that there was another topic that has been a Bruin <laughs> for a while. Um, and so we decided that would be what our topic is for tonight, which is the 200 foot searcher. And so I'll let everybody go around the room and introduce themselves. I am K-Pro Christy. Um, I own a forum called Hint of Riches. I hang out with Cal on Monday and Thursday night. Um, and then whenever else we feel like it. And um, let's see, we have a World Series of Poker tournament coming up and lots of other things, but that's who I am. You guys should know me by now if you've made your way here. So Mike, who are you? Hey everybody, I'm Mike Cowling on the YouTubes. I'm known as Cow Lazars or Cow Lasers or Coin, La Coin Lazars or Map Lazars. It's, it's so many different things at this point. Um, so yeah, like Christy said, we go live a couple times a week and I hope everybody subscribes to the channel and checks us out. And the other thing is if anybody has a topic that they would like us to talk about, uh, email me or Christy. Uh, the emails will be in the description of the video. Awesome. And Joel and, and Victoria, well, Joel, the wiki. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Joel Lewicki. Uh, the joke was earlier that uh, until my wife comes back downstairs from putting the kids to bed, then uh, this is just going to be my wife here. Uh, she's going to join us for a little bit. Today. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, I run a, uh, a group on Facebook called the Thrill of the Chase Forest Fan Community. It focuses on positive interaction from the chase. Um, and uh, I, I did not make any coffee tonight. Uh, but I do have a giant jug of yogurt that I plan to mess with in my sauna. Uh, so <laughs> stick around for that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch some of Mike's earlier work. It is superb. I watched that today because he uploaded it on YouTube and or on uh, Facebook. And I thought, wow, there is a confident person. <laughs> yeah, don't watch this video. <laughs> and Cynthia Meacham. My name is Cynthia Meacham. I have a blog, ChasingFensTreasure.com. I am a fenaholic, and I feel like I definitely have been within 200 miles of that treasure. Excellent. Okay, so we have the panel um, tonight that, um, and really kind of what we're going to do is um, Cynthia and I have some things that we think are fact, or at least factual basis of things that have occurred in the past. Um, We'll break it up to what we know, kind of the facts, um, and Joel and Mike and Victoria, when she arrives, um, will be responsible to ask questions. And if you are in that chat room, um, we want to hear questions from you as well. Um, we're just going to kind of open and honest on everything we know up to this point. Um, so the first thing we'll talk about is just the facts. What, what do we know? Um, the second is, do we think it's possible to find this person? Um, and then who are the candidates? And then is there a value in knowing? Um, and then we have a couple of things at the end that everybody will put their own two cents worth. Um, we'll let everyone have a wrap up because I think everybody has different thoughts at the end of this. We all, God knows where we're gonna go tonight. I, I will assure you it will be a fun night in my opinion because um, everyone has opinions, everybody. <laughs> Mike's quote, I love it. And I will repeat it always. Okay, so why don't we jump into the first part of this, which is, what do we know? What are the facts of uh, the 200 foot searcher? Um, Cynthia, would you like to begin? Yeah, I want to start off by recapping uh, what transpired on July 4th and 5th, which is sort of what started um, this whole thing. So on July 5th, Forrest had lunch with in Santa Fe with Christy Capro, Jason Dent, Sasha, and me. After Forrest left, the four of us were talking, and K-Pro and Jason told, uh, they were telling Sasha and me how they had been to Fenn's house the, the day before. It was the first time they had ever met him, I believe, face-to-face, -face, the first time they had ever been to his home. And in the course of their visit, Forrest mentioned the 200-foot searcher. And he said that there was only 
so I, I have this written down, so so I don't misquote what they said many months ago. Wait, so, what, so uh, Cynthia, just to be clear, you wrote it down at the time. Yes, yes. Yeah. So the, so, and, so this, and was this... this did Forrest um, mention this 200-foot searcher unsolicited, or were you guys talking about it first? Well, Cynthia wasn't there directly. I wasn't there, so, I, well, I for, wasn't Christy, for Christy, then. I'm just wondering, were you guys talking about it, or did he just out of the blue say, hey, there's a 200-foot searcher, if you remember? You know, we were there for a while, so I don't recall exactly. I, I mean, we talked about so many different things. I, I, I don't know how we stumbled on the conversation, um, I, but... So I don't recall exactly how it came up, but I know that um, it did come up and there was, I won't say lengthy conversation, but it wasn't a quick one. There was quite a few things said. Um, and then we all talked about the next day and Cindy, I, she's a smart lady. She captured it. So, cause I was like, I don't recall exactly that. And she's like, well, this, and she has it all written at, which is a brilliant thing to do. Um, and it helped kind of exactly put it in concrete now that it's been a few months later. So back to you, Cynthia. Okay, so, so Fenn said there was only one 200-foot searcher. Um, he only searched once. He was rich and didn't need the money. He, he only searched because he knew Forrest. And then Forrest said the man apparently knew him better than he thought he did. Find this guy, find the treasure. So, so this, is, this is what Christy and Jason were telling Sasha and me at our lunch, um, just the four of us. And what was really funny about it, or at least I thought so at the time, was you have so so four veteran searchers. You know, we none of us are just new to the game, right? Four veterans, two people who had met Finn for the very first time the previous day, and Sasha and me, who have had a long-standing friendship with Finn for about five years. So basically, you have the new people talking to Forrest. Sasha and me being the older people that have known him for a long time. And we sat there and we argued what that meant. And I, as I recall, um, Christy and Jason were trying to tell me that automatically was confirmation that meant it was in New Mexico. And it's like, mm -hmm. the hell, bullshit, it is not. Um, that, to me, means it's either in Montana or Wyoming. So there we are, all these... The, the same but different, and we actually were arguing about this at the time. And I don't recall that any of us came up with any names at that time. Um, I'm sure the wheels were turning in my head as to who I thought it could be, because I needed someone that was going to be searching in Wyoming, so I could use it as confirmation bias for it to be in my area. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that was basically the, the recap of that conversation. I will say the one that I think you missed, but I do think you have on your blog, they didn't know, they didn't know they were the 200 foot searcher. That's true, right. Yeah, that was the only thing out of that list that I right. originally had remembered. That was the one, the one that hadn't yes. uh, come up in your outline right there. Yes. So, um, so we have now one searcher, male, searched once, came within 200 feet, was rich, didn't need it for the money, was doing it more just because he was a friend with Forrest and that he was surprised he knew him that well, which was probably, that was the most fascinating part of that part of the conversation because you, if you knew him well, does that help? And so, I mean, is that, could that be cheating if you're trying to get to know him well? Or is that fair game? Or that was actually just the most fascinating of all the things that he said that day. So that must, because this guy didn't re, didn't know he was within 200 feet of the treasure, it must mean that he emailed Forrest, told him where he was searching, and then Forrest just knew. Remember Forrest said he scans emails for keywords. Apparently this guy had one of the keywords that put him within 200 feet of the treasure, right? I mean, we can... Well, that's what Justin actually reviewed, and there's been some other confirmation through other quotes. The other, I will say three things that I would not attest to this time that Jason and I went to Forest House um, is they he emailed a picture. Um, he's was not on the blogs and that it was prior to 2013 because that's when we got the quote of the 200 footer. So it needs to be someone in 2010, 11 time frame, um, 10, 11, 12, uh, 11, 12 time frame. And um, they he had emailed probably as a hey this was a hoot here's mm. where i was kind of thing rather than a tell me where it is because he only went once he just went kind of on a lark i think um or that's how he made it that's how he portrayed it i mean jason may have heard it a little differently everybody hears things a little differently so joel what do you think in there you look like a cat with a canary in his mouth 
Well, so <laughs> the email is assumed until you add right. that additional information, right? That uh, that a picture was emailed. So now it's the the photographic evidence that seems to have indicated to Forrest where the searcher was, so that they knew, uh, you know, Forrest knew. Perhaps that's how they got there was walking within 200 feet of the treasure. And my thought is this, the person that was there must have taken a photograph of something they thought Forrest would be interested in and would want to see again. Um, because it wasn't a picture of the treasure chest. It must have been something else that would have piqued Forrest's interest. Uh, and it, the, you know, putting that together with the fact that it was somebody that knew Forrest and was surprised that they knew him that well, uh, I think that it does help to know the things that are meaningful to Forrest Venn. Yeah. Okay. So, um, are there any other facts that we would like to throw in? Um, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm giggling tonight. <laughs> Let me drink my drink. Go when do I get to read the email? When do I read Forrest? <laughs> yeah, that, go, will be that would be that, it. Well, what email? What email? That's right. <laughs> okay, so so before, before we transition there, um, do we have any questions from the room about the facts? I want to make sure that everybody gets, uh, there's a lot of people asking questions and they're like, are we going to have, are we going to have an opportunity? So I think before, because the next piece is going to be, like I outlined before, is it possible to find this person? And Forrest has weighed in on that. And I will make it clear, a lot of people... Uh, gave me feedback not to bother Forrest for words. This was unsolicited. He gave uh, he gave Cynthia words, CC'd me. Cynthia has it up on her blog as email proof. She has a screen capture of it. And she will read the which words really for Forrest. That, <laughs> which is hard. <laughs> oh, it's legit because I got it too. I, I legitimized Cynthia. <laughs> With the, K-Pro is a whiz on the computer. She can do a lot of things on the computer. Yeah. I know. Don't make fun of me. She, I know. She, she, she didn't know how to go live on YouTube, but she can do all these other things. Oh, I yeah. thought that was funny when I read that. No, my secretary is awesome. I just can't <laughs> use her for the chase. That's the thing that sucks. So anyway, um, okay. So um, Mike, have you seen any... Um, any questions from the chat room? Well, Dave Calvi uh, says there was proof online, but now it's gone. He says there was an online picture, but he hasn't given any details on where that picture was. So, Dave, if you want to, I don't know if you want to say what, what it is you saw. I mean, was it Dale's blog? What are, you, what are you talking about? He says there was proof, and then it's been removed. Okay. So I don't know what that okay. means. Great. Let's see yeah. it. Let's see, because we don't want to do the, oh, but I can't tell you thing. If you do the, oh, I can't tell you thing, we're going to ignore it. But we will love to hear from you. Anyway. Now, Chris Jones just said um, he heard that he thinks a woman was with the 200-foot searcher. Did anybody hear that? Did any Forrest ever say that, that a woman was with him? Um, Chris Jones, where did you? That's yeah, on, it's, on the, it's either on Jenny's or somewhere where Forrest said there might have been a woman with. It's at the, okay. it's at the movie Dickens interview. Oh, that's right. When he it's says that, that wasn't, person that wasn't, person wasn't, that there might have been a woman with him. Right. But that wasn't factual of what was told to Christy and Jason at Fenn's house. That was, I don't know when that was posted, when Forrest put those words on Jenny's or wherever. So Dave Calvi just said there was a picture on Google Maps, but now it's gone. So I have no idea what that means. I don't, whenever anybody brings up Google Maps, I kind of just turn off because that's so subjective. I just, you know, <laughs> that's just me personally. Well, you can though. upload, I think, and I don't know because I'm not the whiz. Um, I think on Google Maps, like if you're on vacation somewhere and you want to upload a picture. Yeah, of that's true. Or yeah. wherever, I yeah. think maybe that's what he means, but I have... I, so I Anon Anon just said, colleagues, there's why focus on one person. Several have been within 200 feet. Well, that's not, that's possible, but that's not what Forrest said. And what we're talking about tonight is the conversation that was had with Forrest. So there's no way to know if several have been within 200 feet. Did, did Forrest say that recently? I'm trying to think of our Minotaur Moreno yeah. uh, that we went through. So Mike, if I can read this email, this will help mm -hmm. people understand what Forrest is saying. Okay. Do I have permission to read this now? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. So this is an email. Christy, aren't you in control of the show? <laughs> That's right. Um, technical difficulty. I mean, technical person, even though everyone thinks I'm an advanced wizard. Yes, I am. Cynthia, it is now your time. Please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. This morning, Forrest sent me this email to read. He copied Christy on it as well. He asked us to read this on the show. He said, the person who walked within about 200 feet of the treasure did not know how close they were to it. There is no possible way anyone but me 
could know who that person is or where they were searching. So that means that person, well, my interpretation is that person does not know they were the 200 footer. Right. And is the only person that knows who it is and where it was. And we can I, speculate okay. all we want, which is what we're going to do, but I, uh, no one really knows. And I understand him saying you're never going to know for sure who it was, or even if you find the person, you're never going to find out where they searched. But it's fun to talk about it. That's all we're doing is we're having fun with talking but about it. Here's here's three things that I would like to note with this. I'm going to put like my Sean Martinez investigator hat on. One, unsolicited, so don't protest too much. Two, he said walk to the treasure. There's people that say, no, you have to ride a horse. You have to get on an ATV. Oh, the helicopter one. Uh, that. I think has now been put to rest. And three, he says he in that email. So the people that say, no, it's she, it's a she, because the women are the ones, fleet. I would love it to be a woman, but uh, no. unsolicited, walked, and he. No, what? not in this email. He says the person who walked within about 200 feet of the treasure did not know how close they were to it. He never Hold says on. he, and he never says she. He Hold uses on. person and they. No, hold on. Oh, crap. That was my third one. Did you get a different email than me? No, I have to go. I saw your... That was Quick, yours. Just make up a third one. <laughs> <laughs> and then Forrest Fenn said... No. And the 200-footer is... Forrest no. Fenn said, what? <laughs> so Forrest is always talking about the middle. The middle two letters of the word they is he. So oh. clearly, oh. there's a hint there. Case closed. No. Look, Case closed, right? Joel. Well, he said the... Per I'm sorry. It's not the he part. It's the person. The person. So that means one. One. So, so somebody just asked Cynthia if you could read it again, please. It's the email, the email from Forrest, if you could read it again. Yes. The person who walked within about 200 feet of the treasure did not know how close they were to it. There is no possible way anyone but me could know who that person is or where they were searching. Okay. I mean, basically, he's saying. You're never going to figure it out. Have fun discussing yeah. it or whatever, yeah. you know, driving yourself crazy, but you're never going to yeah. figure it out. And that's fine. Well, that's and, fair. And I will say a lot of people are asking where the biggest blogs are to go and look at. Um, I won't say this is the biggest blog, but I will say this is the most informational blog that I have ever been to. Chasing Fen's Treasure. That is Cynthia's blog. This email is on it other thoughts about the 200 footer, but she blogs constantly because she is a serial boots on the ground person and all thing Forrest Fenn. So please go to that blog. Um, but Joel, go. Yes. So I, I know Forrest's uh, probably watching this. So hi, Forrest. Thank you for tuning in. And two, you know, he sent the email seemingly trying to basically say, simmer down now. Uh, everybody relax. This is not going to help you find it. Oh, did I lose you all? Do you have? No, me? I hear you. Yeah, we hear. Yeah, we got you. We're here. But you know, just reading between the lines, there are some things in there that I think because I don't really think you're going to find who the 200 footer is. That's not why I'm on tonight's panel. My right. my thing is thinking about the 200 foot searcher makes you think different things, which I think is really important for figuring this thing out. And so, for instance, Forrest seems adamant in the email this morning. You're not going to be able to figure, is he telling us that that person is dead? Ooh. I don't know. Well, it's obviously Douglas Preston, right? We can all agree on that, right? <laughs> yes. And Douglas is not dead because he was just at a party. Yeah. Well, did, you <laughs> right. see the picture, did you see the picture of him and Forrest that Preston put up, uh, Douglas put up, uh, what, a week ago up on him? They just did lunch together, probably talking about, yeah, when I was 200 feet from it, don't you remember? Douglas it? Preston's <laughs> probably watching right now. So here's a fun I little story. I actually emailed Douglas oh. Preston, this is probably three years ago, about the Forrest Fen treasure. Actually, I just remembered it as we were talking about it. And I asked him something, I forget what it was, something about the poem. And his response was, I'm the last person in the world you want to talk to about the Forrest Fen poem. So... Okay. I'm okay. So um, let, let's catch up with the chat room. Cause I see a couple of highlights to me. How's the interchange you see? We're talking about the, right. The rest. So, I don't know. Deep thinkers. Quite, I don't. Hmm. Oh, it reminds you of that. Okay. I don't know about that one. Go so ahead, I just want to make sure I've, I got it straight because this is the first time I've heard this part that the person, the person that was within 200 feet sent for us a picture, a photo, and that's how he knows he was within 200 feet. Is that correct? 
I did not hear it directly, but I've heard it from. Uh, so here's the one thing that happened. So this ha the conversation that Cynthia is talking about happened in July. I nor Jason put anything really out about it because it was kind of interesting, but there wasn't enough to go on. Mm -hmm. um, and so it kind of went dormant until I think it was about two months ago. And two months ago, it came out. Um, it, and so a lot of people and me specifically that was there. So I had a lot of vets actually emailing me um, saying we're such a small community at this time. Did you know this? Did you know that? Did you know? Now it's all second, third, fourth hand information. And if you go to Toby's one, it's like once you get three or four removed, you know, it's not. But the one thing I learned was the community was really small at a time. And there were some consistent stories that were out there. Are they verifiable? No. Is there enough information to go off? No, it's not 100%. I mean, it's truly not. not. But he has said about the 200 footer, if you remember Justin's story or Justin's presentation, um, I think it was in there or it was somewhere. He knew that somebody had, um, he knew somebody was close and I might not get it exactly right because they had emailed him a picture. Um, do you guys remember that one or am I I might be off. I'm off a lot. A lot of people. Come on, that. chat room. Help us out. <laughs> yeah, usually it's so, the chat room that dings. <laughs> so to be clear, that did not come from Forrest himself about a photo. That's just kind of out there in the in the searcher community. Because to yeah. me, if, if it was a photo, that means there's a landmark of some kind, right? It wasn't just a photo of some trees. Forrest had to be like, oh, yeah, I know where that is. Whatever was in that photo. Uh, a sign, a landmark of some kind, something where he's like, wow, you were within 200 feet of the treasure. So, but it sounds like we don't know for sure if it was a photo or if this person just simply emailed him to say, this is where I searched. It was fun. Good luck with your treasure hunt. Yeah. Yeah. So, so those, uh, so, so do we have top candidates? So I know, again, please go to Cynthia Meacham's blog because she actually outlines the people um, specifically. I will say the list that I had was a big one, but like, one day in, I figured out, oh, it, it's a male. So I have to rule out the female and rule out, rule out, rule out kind of thing. And I did want to see if females were searching with males and that sort of thing. So my list became very small very quickly. Um, but also there's a whole, like Forrest says, there's a lot of people not even touching these blogs or these forums. Um, but it really offended some of the searchers that first thought I stole, I was trying to like figure them out to figure out their spot. You're, they're not on the blogs and that's not to be hurtful. That is just factual information that I believe. And so I don't think they're on the blogs and the forums. So, if, and that's where I've met 99% of the searchers. So I don't, the people that I, that were named to me were people that I have never met um, and actually never knew of. Like I knew one was a jeweler. And I remember even <laughs> having a conversation with Cynthia saying, who's the jeweler? And Cynthia is a wealth of information. Oh, this, oh, this one, this one was and she knew a lot, a lot of detail when I would get a little piece or another vet would say, well, what about such and such? And I would contact a different vet and say, do you know about, you know, this or that? And so all four states came up, in my opinion, um, and a wide variety of people came up, in my opinion. Um, so that is that that. So do we have a leading kit? Do we think there is a leading candidate? So I, go ahead, Cynthia. Sorry. So so my. Uh, could you start to load the uh, yeah. Facebook page from Douglas Preston where he says he tried once because Douglas actually fits the criteria. He's mm -hmm. one, He's the only person out of the list that I got from the internet or added to that actually met every all the criteria that I that I know of. So it's so up right now. It's is, it's up right now. Go ahead. And so one of the things while this is loading, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit. So um, this is this is from Doug Preston's Facebook page, and I think the date is like 2015 or 2016. I believe it's on the, the page that's going to come up. But uh, what I want to say while it's loading is what's really funny is anybody can go to this Facebook page, find this, and read all the comments beneath it. And and out of all the commenters that commented on this post of Doug's way back when, the only two searchers that I knew of are David Rice and Bill Gorman. Now, wouldn't it be really funny if Bill Gorman was right, that all along it is Doug Preston <laughs> and Bill Gorman has known this all these years, and Bill's going to be the guy that gets the treasure and, uh, well, whenever the snow melts. And just Bi saying. Bill Gorman just said it would do no good to ID the 200-foot searcher, so... Uh, the other thing is redneck, <laughs> redneck. Ex <laughs> That's funny. I'm to, here I am trying to help Bill out. He's already saying it's, there's no point. 
So uh, Redneck Express said on Lucky Love's YouTube channel, the name of the video is The Cutting Room Floor. But what's in that video that we're talking about, Redneck Express, or anybody? A couple people have said it's in that video, but what's in that video? I must have lost what we were talking about. Well, and as you're doing that, there was another comment from uh, Deep Thinker that says it was the quote of who's been the closest. And he says something like, I don't want to say because she'll tear up the countryside um, or she would be shocked that the whole she, she would faint. She would faint she, if she, she knew who she was. Yeah, uh, reference that came that came from um, one of the book signings at the bookstore. And the question was, who is closer? I, I thought this was the one who is closer, Dale or Stephanie. Yeah. And he answered. That was his answer, I thought, to that. So yeah. decals in, in the chat room. Decal just said in Lucky on Lucky Love's YouTube channel, the video clip of the video clip. It's entitled "The Cutting Room Floor." Forrest says it was a photo that he saw, and that's how he knows that the person was within 200 feet. So that's Thank huge. You. I think Thank really you. we don't need to know who the searcher was. We need that photo, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> But how how would you ever get that? I mean, go through all of his emails because he probably only got four that year in 2011. And he, he would not have gotten many. That's true. Back then, he wasn't getting many. I bet. Oh, I think even the 30 or four. I think there was. I think there's plenty. So, okay, wait. So Cynthia's next. Um, okay. So are the is the presentation ready, Mike? I already put it up. What, what? Oh, have you gone through all? No, no, just the one, just the one. What else do we want to show? Okay, I don't see it. So I showed the one that says I, I gave it a try. That was from his Facebook page. How do you uh, see it? It it showed. I already took it down. No, <laughs> I can, no. I can so, bring it back Cynthia, up. Cynthia, you have to bring up the YouTube portion. You're looking oh, at okay. Zoom. That'll be yeah, just the yeah. four of us. You have You'll to bring only, up okay. yeah. You only see okay. it on YouTube. Well, I've already seen it. I don't need to see it, so. So here's the other one. I'll just post them since you sent them. I will show. So from Douglas's... Uh, Facebook page. I had lunch with Forrest Fenn today at La Fonda. We spoke about the Fenn treasure and the thousands searching for it. An extremely interesting and, enlight and enlightening conversation, but my lips are sealed. And that was from uh, December 6th of this year. So them two definitely still get together and talk, right? And then, yes. yeah. And then here's one about an important clue. I think this is interesting. Uh, this is from September 9th, 2017. Douglas says, Douglas Preston, for those of you interested in finding the Fen treasure, I would like to share with you the foreword I wrote to the, his new book. There is an extremely important clue in this piece of writing as to the possible location of the treasure. Also, be sure to read the comments as they also contain intriguing thoughts and clues. And that was um, the foreword to Once Upon a While. And I assume he's referring to the Denver Museum where Forrest said he would park his car, right? No, I think it's actually the edit where it said Douglas Preston, 200 foot searcher. And he like removed that part. And that was very upsetting to <laughs> right, many of us. Right. That is sarcasm. And Forrest, I apologize. I'm a little honoring tonight. I apologize. And then we got one more. And thanks to Cynthia for sending these. This is from, <laughs> uh, so this is from Forrest Fenn on Dale's blog, September 26, 2012. I use a small F because I'm too lazy to hit the shift button. All of this cyberspace verbiage is conspicuous by the absence of talk about where warm waters halt. Several months ago, some folks correctly mentioned the first two clues to me in an email, and then they went right past the other seven, not knowing that they had been so close. Alas, and Dame Fortune, so often a fickle and seductive wench, never spun her wheel, try the wheel, to lure them back. So, uh, so I'm assuming you sent that Cynthia, because you're saying, is this the same person? In other words, for this person to get right. within 200 feet, they solved the first two clues and then went yes, right past and, the rest. And the other thing was, I wanted you to see the date or to share the date of that, uh, mm -hmm. comment from Forrest. 2012. Was, was it? Yep. Uh, 2000, uh, August, Sep 2012, September 26, 2012. September. Mm -hmm. And he's saying several months ago, whether that's one month ago or three months ago or whatever. So definitely he's talking about someone that was out searching one time before, probably before August of 2012. Right, 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 right. So if you're not rich, you knew Forrest before and blah, blah, it ain't you. Sorry. And Chris Jones asked earlier in the chat room, how do you narrow down who it is? Well, that's how. It's somebody that was... With um, the summer of 2012 or earlier, right? Somebody that was rich, somebody that's only been on one boots on the ground search, and somebody that knows Forrest because Forrest said I didn't think he knew me that well. So it's definitely like a personal friend, I would I would say, of Forrest. So 
Well, so let's get into, is it possible to find the person? So we have some information. We have a community that was pretty tight knit. We have quite a few vets that are still around. I know I got um, one lead that I got is somebody said, well, there was this certain event where this person that normally isn't there was a friend and said something kind of like this. I took that to a different vet and said, and wouldn't give me the name. And I got the name from someone else and then took it to someone else. And they said, oh no, that isn't it because that's actually a female searcher. So there's been that kind of, but I'm talking in three or four months time, maybe 20 minutes on emails or an hour, maybe on emails, like not a significant amount of time. Um, the significant amount of time is actually trying to solve the poem and Google and all that, but it's the off season. So it's just time to, time to maybe go down a few of these rabbit holes. Um, but <clears throat> do I think it is possible Maybe, but I'm going to put it in maybe the 10% category. Um, this is just my opinion. We want to go around the room for everybody. Um, but I don't think it is likely that from the little, little bit of information we have that we're going to get, we're, we'd be able to hone in on that person. What do you think, Joel? I agree. I don't think that uh, with what we have, the pool could possibly be narrowed down enough to correctly identify that person. Uh, without the introduction of additional evidence, which uh, Forrest conspicuously did not add to the email this morning, uh, I think because he wants, I think he wants people to play the game he started. And this isn't the game he started. Uh, he wants people to use the poem and the hints that he put in the thrill of the chase. Uh, and I think maybe some hints that he's put in his subsequent memoirs, including one that he just revised. So uh, I think that there are things that he's put out that will help you. Uh, I just don't know if this is it. I do think there's a lot of stuff on the periphery of this conversation of, you know, being 200 feet within the treasure and what that person was doing to get there. That's mm -hmm. what interests me. Uh, yeah. I don't think that, well, I don't necessarily think that the early search community is the most reliable in getting information on who that person would be. And I'll just leave that there. Now, but I will say when you, and this would be, God, this would, goodness, this would have been perfect for Sean Martinez. Probably the most reliable that we have because we don't really have anything else. <laughs> so, sure. um, so I agree with you, but and I, I think, think that's why maybe Forrest says that it's not likely or really it's not possible for you to identify who that person is. Uh, you know, th that's the trouble with eyewitnesses, right? So if I call someone to the stand in court as an eyewitness, you've got to take that with a grain of salt because you can have every different eyewitness that you have there is going to have a different perception of what happened. And that fades with time really quickly. Uh, if I try to ask you something that happened in 2011 or 2012, your memory of that is going to be uh, very suspect. Well, and even the night there or the day that we were having lunch, Cynthia's exactly right. There, We, four people, came up with four different out, like outcomes to hearing the same that we all agree Jason and I heard it we kind of confirmed each piece that Cynthia went over and then we went into analysis and it was like this confirms it's in this state this confirms it's in this state this could and then there it, it was just it, she actually picked up on it more than I did because we weren't arguing we're just thinking oh that kind of leads me here or that kind of leads me there and I just thought it was really it, I Cynthia picked up on it and said we all came up with a different conclusion probably confirmation bias this is when I was in New Mexico. So it meant New Mexico. Now I'm like, I don't know if it means New Mexico because I'm no longer in New Mexico. So uh, Cynthia, what do you think? And uh, just to let everybody know, we're a little bit over 200 people watching right now. Go ahead. So, so I, I really agree with everything Joel just said. Um, I, I really don't think that anyone can ever identify who the, who the specific searcher or the person was. I think Forrest is really telling the truth when he says he's the only one that knows even this guy doesn't know. Um, but can, can we glean anything else from what he said, the, the few words that we said that you were telling us at that lunch and then also his email today? Um, I, I, so as I recall, and I haven't researched this to actually post a quote or whatever, I recall that he talked already about when he first, he uh, only had a thousand books of TTOTC printed the first round, 
because his parents were dead and he didn't think anyone would buy it. And as I recall, he said somewhere along the line that he gave all his friends a book. I mean, so he gave out these books to his friends, right? And it seems to me then somewhere else down the line that came up were, and, and this might have been Doug, although it, it very could have easily have been Doug at one of his, um, Doug accompanied uh, Forrest to a lot of book signings. Doug, Doug's publicly been with Forrest a lot where he spoke at searchers were present. So anyway, I, I sort of remember thinking that it could have been Doug who said Forrest had given him a book. It laid there unopened for, for out and how long. And then finally he opened it up and read the book. And whether or not this 200 foot searcher, foot searcher is who knew Forrest, um, I actually think it definitely easily could be one of the people that Forrest, one of his friends that Forrest gave a book to when it was first printed back in 2010. Uh, it doesn't mean this, that this person searched in 2010. Maybe they never opened it up until 11 or 12 and then they finally decided, oh, I know For Forrest. Just because I'm a friend, I will go, I will try to figure it out and I'll go one time. To me, that's the scenario that I that I think it was. And um, and this is all speculation on my part. I certainly don't know anything more than anybody else. And that is why I place it in Wyoming. And I'm gonna argue with Christy the rest of the show. If she's gonna keep telling me it's in New Mexico, I will continue to argue with her that it's, that, well, it might be in New Mexico, but not from Fenn saying anything he just said about the 200. No, okay, and this this confirms exactly what you're saying and all the people that say that I'm a terrible searcher. At the time when I was searching in New Mexico, those quotes made it seem to me like it's New Mexico. Now I've gone up north. I think it's somebody that he was on the Cody board with because I'm up north. It's called confirmation bias. So I'm a terrible searcher because this shows exactly. I do remember arguing with you that day in a lovable, wonderful way, and I'm going to now agree with you because I've moved state, so it fits both scenarios and there's rich people up north there's rich people down south so as long as it's in the four search states i mean this is where it's just funny um at this point i don't think i don't think it's i don't think it's the amount uh i i just think that was it worth the 20 30 maybe hour discussion with probably 10 different searchers that's the one thing that's been pretty cool is i've met a few new searchers because of that so is it worth the hour's time yeah, because I met some new searchers and it's kind of interesting to think about. But I spent as much time after, the, actually probably spent more time at that lunch discussing it with the four of us than I have spent on it since then, which I think is kind of funny um, that 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 is that I just don't think it is worth huge investigative reporting. Um, I think it is more there's just been some questions. And so we settle it. But the community is the one that went kind of so big with it. Um, and I think it's maybe because they didn't know all these details. I think this will probably settle the discussion and debates and um, that'll be it. Joel. So just along the Douglas Preston line, some things that I'm sure people are thinking about. One, Forrest had originally asked Douglas to write the Thrill of the Chase book. Douglas turned him down. Douglas saw an edition of the poem prior to the published edition and said it was too easy. So there are some things that I think go along that vein with Douglas that seem to support not only fitting the things that we know about the 200 foot searcher. So, um, you know, we've got uh, what one person for each foot watching this right now. There's over 200 people that are watching this, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody, uh, email Douglas Preston and, <laughs> and ask him exactly where he searched, right? I'm going um, to email Douglas Preston and I'm going to ask him to come on our show. And maybe he will and maybe he won't, but maybe he can clarify and he'll probably come on and say, I have no idea where it is, but I will ask, ask him. him I'll reach out and ask him to come on and clarify. Just ask him to send you the picture that he sent to Forrest. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, well, and there is a question from Jason. Penn Treasure Hunter said, panel, why is everybody spending so much time and energy trying to find a 200 foot searcher when they could be trying to figure out the clues? Why did we discuss it for so long at lunch? I mean, we, we got into some good discussion at lunch and I spent a couple minutes here and there since then. I mean, it's just, I can, I can answer that for you. Yeah, right. An Go ahead. Okay. Cynthia. Cynthia I, I want to answer. I'd like to direct, direct my answer directly to Jason. 
So Jason, I have a new song that I came up with uh, in November, early December. I I actually I uh, I actually made a run to Cody the very last week of November to try to get there. I've never been to the actual spot before, and it is killing me to go see it. Uh, I was within about three miles of it, and the snow was so deep I had to turn around in my truck. So I now have four months that will just drive me frigging crazy. I don't need to read anymore. I've read the book a billion times. I have researched everything and I have my solution and nine, my solution to the, the, the poem and the nine clues and I'm just waiting for the snow to melt. So for anybody else that's like me, I got 120 days with nothing else to do. So I'm but gonna Cynthia, call are you every day and argue with her. Translation, uh, Cynthia's running interference right now so that no one else figures it out. <laughs> but Cynthia, in the last four months, in, before that day, how many hours and hours and hours and days did you spend trying to find this person from our discussion? I'm like, for me, maybe 60 minutes talking to 10 different people. I, I spent more time at the lunch discussing it than I did since then. Um, but, and because it came out and so many people are discussing it now, I, it would have been better if it, it wasn't put out, but that wasn't within my control. So, but Joel, were you going to say something? I think uh, we're all I gonna ask, something. No, I'm, I'm following up with something that was earlier uh, mentioned in the chat and someone sent me something individually. So I'm asking them if they want me to share it. So come, okay. come Mike? back to me later. So I got a couple things. Um, a lot of people in the chat room were saying, why even discuss it? Why even do a show on it? Because you're never going to figure out who it is. We have a treasure hunt, a very large treasure hunt, where the creator of the hunt, he talks to people. He emails people back. So we're talking about it because it's something that he said. It's not like we're just pulled something out of thin air and we're trying to figure it out. Forrest said, and Christy, you were there. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong. Didn't he say if you find that searcher, you would find the treasure? That was a that yeah. Yes. Okay, and you weren't the only person there, so at least there could could be some independent verification. But that's well, why we're see, talking wait, about wait, wait, it. Wait. Not only that, the next day, four of us talked exactly about that quote. So right. there was four of us that right. confirmed. I just didn't make it up and only tell Cynthia. I mean, it was right? Four of them. Why? Why? When you got together, did you four even talk about that? Because it's something he said. The guy who knows where the treasure chest is said something. That hey, this is if you found this person, you could find the treasure. So a lot of people think it's cheating or they think it's a waste of time. Well, maybe it is, but the only reason we're talking about it is because the guy who created this whole thing, he he said it. He made that comment. So that's all. We're just talking about something that Forrest said, just like all the other YouTube videos. You know, Forrest Fenn said what that that I've made. It's we're talking about things that Forrest has said in the past. So that's point number one. That's why we're talking about it because he made the comment. Um, and number two, I think the most important takeaway for me is the photo that, and I'll watch Lucky Love's video when we get done. If there was a photo that made Forrest Fenn realize, oh, they were within 200 feet of the treasure, then there's got to be something in that photo that's very discernible, right? Maybe it's a picture of the medicine wheel, of the bighorns. Maybe it was a picture of the, I don't know, Yellowstone. I, I'm just kicking around ideas. But that there's a landmark or something that's identifiable, I think, is pretty important. And I also personally, I just like the fact that somebody was within 200 feet. You know, we're all trying to find this thing. And sometimes you get frustrated and you're like, ah, it's not even out there. But somebody was within 200 feet. So I think it's important. And will we ever figure out who the person is? No. But it's fun to talk about. Go ahead, Joel. Well, I was just going to say, you know, Forrest said, find the 200 foot or find the treasure. That's not necessarily true. Because that person was 200 feet and didn't find right. it. Right, right, so, right, right. I mean, uh, in that sense, um, and two, I, I, I really don't think that that person had anything we don't have uh, in order to find it. I think that uh, that person was able to put together some things to help them figure it out. But I think those are all things that we have at our disposal as well. And, well, the and we have we do have one person in the chat saying um, why why does K Pro she why didn't she ever tell us why is she this why is she that why can't we get the truth from K Pro bring your question do you have an actual question other than can we get the truth from K Pro yep that's why we're having this panel bring it yeah and ask the your person questions. that can yeah. confirm 
is Cynthia, who has just said when four of us were around, she actually took notes, not during the meeting or during the lunch, it was after. That is exactly why I'm here. And that's exactly why I wanted to, to put, what did he actually say from my mouth? Okay, here, I, I won't get exactly the words of Cynthia, but there was one searcher, he was male. He went one time, he was within 200 feet. He was not rich or he was rich, so he didn't need the money and he knew him better than he thought he did. The searcher knew Forrest better than he thought he did. And if you find the searcher, you find the chest. So that was exactly what he said. So if there's any other questions, please let me know because that's why we're here. That's why I am doing a panel open to any questions and lurch your money. You're right. Cynthia wasn't there. She was there the next day where two of us was there and I just outlined it for you. Did you have more questions? I'm willing to answer them. Well, Chris Jones just had an interesting comment. He said, okay, I'm the 200 foot searcher and I told you exactly where I searched. Why would you believe me? So in other words, even if somebody steps up and meets the criteria, why would we believe them? It's not so much that we would believe them, but to me, I would look in that area for where warm waters halt. In other words, it's an area to focus on. That's all. It could be right, yeah. could be wrong, but at least it, yeah. I would look in that state maybe a little bit harder than the other states and just see, oh, well, wow, the clues do fit in this area. I can make the clues fit here. And it's an area well, I never thought of before. That's all. And Anon Anon brings up, I think, a great question. Why do we keep saying one searcher? There's many quotes from Forrest saying that there's several. That is exactly right. There, there's a conundrum here. And he, Forrest has actually done a clarification as well um, on Thor that contradicts this. Because I asked the question, were they on the blogs or were they not? And he said some of them were, some of them weren't. I, we're going over the factual information that came out of Forrest that was confirmed with two searchers and Cynthia captured after that discussion. Um, and so that is, I'm going, but are you exactly, uh, non and on, that's the hard part. We have some red herrings here. There's, there's quotes that say different things. So well, I am more than happy to, yeah. The way I took it, and you guys weigh in, I took it that this person in 2012 was the first searcher to be within 200 feet. Since then, there's probably been more, but I took it that that was the first one. Do I have that wrong? I don't, I don't know. Or is there any way to know? I guess we don't know. Yeah. Forrest, right in the chat, would you and just clarify that for us? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, right. I will say this, and it's so um, the the person that mentioned the um, the picture that was online that maybe Forrest saw brought up the idea that um, pictures can have geotagging in them for where the picture was taken, uh, and so if someone sent Forrest a picture. That picture may have had that geotagging information in it. I don't know. That's possible, right? Yeah, it's possible. Sure. Or, or it was a, it could have been a picture at the uh, trailhead sign where the person parked their car and then they were getting ready to walk. And right. um, it doesn't mean that treasure is within 200 feet of that sign necessarily, but maybe where they walked on that trail, uh, the treasure was 200 feet from that trail. So Fen knew from seeing the picture of the trailhead they were. I mean, I don't know, but. And know. along those lines, Mike, do you have any, map, any maps left? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of maps left. You can't see them, but the maps are right there on that table. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of maps left. So anybody interested in one, fenmaps at gmail.com. Somebody else well, posted so in the chat, could it, could it be Pamela Shertron? You guys know her and her solve about the Christ of the sh shrine mine or whatever that is. I don't know what did she search back in 2012? And is she, it, is she friends it, with Forrest? I don't know if she meets the criteria. No, she didn't. She, Forrest did not know her until she um, posted her, her story right. somehow I think made it into the Santa Fe newspaper or something. It, yeah. I mean, it made a local paper right. and I'm pretty sure that was the first time Fen and Pam ever met or corresponded. So uh, to me, that, you know, right there. And is she well, rich? I don't know. I don't know. Well, so, so other leading <laughs> candidates. So Christy and Jason, uh, that, that we sort of really dwelled on that were so specific to anything that's ever been said on the blog by Forrest is they were rich and um, they they knew Forrest. It, I don't know that they were a good friend. I I don't I can't remember how he worded it. If he said friend or that they just knew him, and that's why he thought they searched because they knew him. So and then he said about they obviously knew him better than he thought. 
So it's not just some acquaintance or someone that just he signed someone's book. It's someone that they actually knew each other. Now, this is all my opinion. I don't know anything more than any of the people in the chat and and any other people watching. But I just think he he knew them better than just a casual acquaintance. I don't think it was. Um, I really don't think it was Doug Preston because I think he and Doug are really, really, really good friends. And I think it was someone that was sort of a friend, um, but not a relative and not a, a great friend like Douglas. And since Christy already mentioned this earlier, I really like the idea that it was someone on the board of the Cody Museum. He went up there four times a year and um, he, I, I don't want to give too much of my stuff away that's my own stuff and has nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I just think um, it, it was not Pam. We'll go back there. Well, right. Pam email and, and she said mail. So and Charles was, Chapman yeah. just posted that when Pamela's solution came out, Forrest Fenn did make the comment. I never heard of that place before. Yeah. I remember that as well. So that rules her out pretty easy. Well, and William asked, would, how would Forrest define rich? when he is himself rich. I Now, this is my opinion, but um, I'd love to hear from the rest of you. I took it as someone rich like Forrest. Like, we're not talking maybe a million dollars and still, like, saving for retirement or kids. Uh, we're talking, like, a, a socialite, ri elite rich. Like, uh, I won't say, I, I don't know what the number is, uh, 50 million, 100 million, but not, 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 um, not ever needing to work again, like a million, two million. I wasn't think. I mean, there's just too many. I think it's someone that's probably done philanthropic work now that they are giving back because they are, they are wealthy. They're not, they're more than rich. They are wealthy. It well, like, Chris, like Chris says, someone that maybe could live off the interest. Um, but then Forrest also said he has everything he wants, but he doesn't want very much. So uh, rich is a subjective term. Yeah. So, he, um, Go ahead, Cynthia. So, in the statement that I, I that I read that was that was told by Christy and Jason to and me, I believe um, he. Let's see, I don't have that paper right now. He he was rich and did not need the treasure. It was something like that. So this guy right. definitely was not searching for the treasure so that he could cash it in and have money. <laughs> Somebody said it was Ted Turner. So, oh, I, so, okay, I have it right here. He, he was rich and didn't need the money. So RF Hecky said, just play the Lucky Love video. So I looked it up. It's only 30 seconds. So I'm just going to go ahead and play it. Let's see what he said. It's about, it's called The Cutting Room Floor, Lucky Love on YouTube. And I'm just going to go ahead and play it for everybody. Okay, and the four of us need it because we'll talk over it. Yeah, right. So here we go. I'm going to play it right now. I had positive indication that people have been within 200 feet. I don't know that anyone has been closer than 200 feet of the treasure. And that knowledge comes from what? Emails that they've talked, they've written to you? And, and photographs. People, you... people tell me where, normally people tell me generally where they are, but not specifically. But these people told me exactly where they were. I recognized the spot, and but I didn't tell them that they were close. Okay, so there it is. Um, basically, this is from 2016, and basically everybody can watch that on their own, but basically Forrest said, people have sent me emails with some photographs, and most people give me a general location, but these people were specific in where they are, and he recognized the location. That's what he said in a nutshell. So interesting okay. stuff so but that's why we're talking her? about it everybody because Forrest has talked about it yeah well somebody said Cynthia's found her spot she wants to make sure nobody else finds it so she's going to do misdirection for the next 120 <laughs> days yes it's <laughs> all that conspiracy I love it mm. it's in New Mexico <laughs> <laughs> everyone please run to New Mexico so Cynthia, I will ask you this question, which I'm sure you won't answer, but why did you switch states? Why did you go from New Mexico to whatever other state you're in? Can you say or no? Well, I heard that there was a 200 foot searcher that was searching in Wyoming. <laughs> you're so bad. Uh, you're so I'm bad, kidding. Though. I am kidding. I switched states because I ran out of where warm water is hot in New Mexico. I searched here five years and it was time to, uh, just totally erase everything in my head and totally start over. And um, I did some of Montana, 
uh, and then really, really found stuff that I really liked in Wyoming. So that's where I am, Wyoming. So the correct answer was because Forrest told me it's in Wyoming, but. <laughs> oh my God, no. <laughs> Jesus. We, we can have fun. We can have fun, everybody. Relax. Want to joke about it. Okay, so we have gone from what we know the facts. We have done possible. Uh, is it possible to find the person? I think we pretty much say no, but it's interesting to talk about in the off season. Who are the candidates? Are there any other candidates that we want to throw out as possibility? Well, why do we think yeah. that we know who the person is? It could be somebody we've never heard of, right? It could be a friend of Forrest, but nobody, if, especially if they've never posted on the blog, the blogs or forums. I mean, we would never know who that person is, right? Right, right. So. Yeah. I have some. Yes. So, so, so one of the people I'd like to uh, discuss, just because I researched it, um, is, and, and this was brought up on Harry's forum. Uh, someone on Harry's actually posted the first list that I have seen. <laughs> And one of the names on that list was Richard Sonnier, Sonnier. I'm not sure how you say his last name. So Richard was an early searcher, and he has just an awesome uh, website. He started writing his articles, I believe, in November of 2011. His last one, I believe, is in 2015. Uh, just because I wanted to research a little bit for tonight's show, I went there and I started to read some of it. Richard is just a fantastic writer. Uh, he talks a lot about uh, trying to just uh, reading the thrill of the chase, trying to figure out some of the hints or whatever. And then he talks about various places. He talks a lot about places in New Mexico as well as Yellowstone. Now I couldn't tell if he actually searched boots on the ground, each of the places he talked about, but he definitely was doing this more than one time and then just quit it all. He was definitely engaged in this for um, about four years. So uh, I don't think Richard is going to be the 200 footer. I mean, I think he can really be ruled out because of how, uh, how engaged he was and how many times he went. But for anybody that wants some really good information on Richard's ideas about the poem and the book, I highly recommend his stories. Um, I, I can't remember what the actual name of this blog is now. I know if you go on Dale's I'll see if I can website, I think he has it. Or, or also the old Santa Fe Trading Company, I think. Has the, has the link to Richard's way, Mike, blog as well. If, if you go to Dow's on the yeah. very bottom, there's 13. Okay, yeah. So anyway, them. there's really, really good ideas, especially for anybody that's sort of new to this. Go read some of Richard's stories. They they are incredible. He's a great storyteller. Well, his name is not on Dale's blog. I'm looking at the list that's in the bottom, and I see a bunch of people, but not Richard Sonier yeah. or so. I think he I'm took it sure. off. Go, go to the old oh, okay. Santa Fe Trading Company. I think it's in the list on um, Forrest's site. Okay. Other leading, uh, Joel, do you have any like names? You just throw it out. Just do it. You know, you have it. Come on. <laughs> I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to name any name. Uh, I, I think name. In, in respect for Forrest, I think the, the idea that I had, uh, I'm going to refrain from saying. Mm. So. Okay. I, uh, that's respectful. Okay. Yeah. Because here's the other thing. Um, and that is part of the reason that several people have asked me for a list and I didn't put out a list because I was concerned that 400 searchers would be emailing and showing up at their home and doing all those things. I mean, I'm a silly little searcher and I've had that happen. And so if someone really did get feel like that was the 200 footer, I, I was a little concerned with that. But I think we've pretty much ruled most people out. Um, and so I think Forrest may be right. There's there's not a lot of there there because you can't really narrow it down. And um, we spent we spent one more hour. So we have three hours out of our lives that are, <laughs> I mean, but I just don't think there's as much. I, I think it's interesting. And I said this on the last show, on a slow news day, what news will take off? I think because we have the dead of the season and there was only some innuendos and the people that were directly there weren't the ones talking about it. I think this is why that kind of caught fire. And so we were just waiting. I mean, Mike and I discussed a month ago, should we have a, a show? And we just said, no, it'll die down. And it hasn't died down because it's, I mean, it's sexy. If you could find the 200 footer, it's going to be, and I just don't, I, I just don't think it's possible, but still it's interesting to think about. And I don't believe, and I know I am different than many. I don't believe we are under a set of rules that says you cannot solve this except for going to your spot 400 times. And all of a sudden you're <laughs> going to find it on the 400 and one, 
first time. <coughs> um, that's just me. I don't think, I think if you could uh, reverse engineer it, I think if you could get some information, this is, that's what you, that that's what you should do if you can get that information, um, but not, not doing it illegally or inappropriately or anything. We're just chatting and, these things came up. I'll make two points. One, Forrest has said in the past, I would never tell anybody anything that would get him closer to the chest. Do you guys remember him actually saying that? <laughs> so by virtue of that, I think the reason he even mentioned about the 200 foot searcher is because he knows you're never going to figure out who it is. And it, even if you did, it's not going to help you uh, get closer to the chest. Okay. It's just something fun to talk about, which is what we're doing. Yeah. And the other thing, back to my opinions video, this is all just our opinion, guys. A lot of people are like, why are you wasting our time? Well, don't watch. Nobody said you've got to watch this vlog. If you don't like the topic, don't watch. I mean, I've heard somebody say, well, leadership of the Forest Fen treasure hunt. There are no leaders in the Forest Fen treasure hunt. It's all opinions. We can sit down and talk about where warm waters halt for the next hour, and it's just an opinion. We can talk about who the 200-foot searcher is. It's just an opinion. And I'm not going to do what a gypsy's kiss did and put in the description of every vlog this is just our opinion blah 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 it's common sense it's just an opinion everybody so right but when we do like a generic <clears throat> like let's ask questions and let's talk about like homa brown we get 50 60 70 80 90 when we talk about a 200 foot surfer <laughs> we're like what a 209 i mean right. it's, it's something that people because we also push to what do the masses want to talk about because i do think it's interesting to talk about and yeah it's funny because we get more thumbs down and snarky comments but you're still here you're still listening you're still a part of it so i mean i do think it's i again i think it's interesting but i think there is also a whole set of topics that i think we could um, walk through and we will talk. I mean, for the amount of people that are asking, can I be a part of this panel or that panel? I mean, we're, we're going to be booked for a while, but I think it's fa fabulous. I mean, I think we have a lot of things to talk about and our search season is going to be, um, it's going to disappear. Our off season is going to disappear in the search season. And then Cynthia is going to go and grab it. And, <laughs> you know, that is actually one that I wouldn't mind. Somebody asked um, on Facebook today, you know, somebody found it. Do you think everybody would just be overjoyed for that person? And I'm like, wow, you must be really new with days. No, it's going to be Cynthia got a super secret hit. Like somebody asked who's the lead searcher. I think Cynthia's put in time and she's such a good boots on the ground person. If Cynthia goes and gets it, I would say, awesome. I know that'll even catch him more hate. I'm sorry. Um, but, um, but it's, it's one of those there, the person's going to earn it, whether they earn it by doing research in one way or another. Why, why, why do we care what other people are doing? Go find it yourself. So Chris I Jones think. had an interesting comment. He said uh, he he thinks that the searcher knew Forrest and why the place is special to Forrest, that those two things are related. Ooh. So that's interesting. I mean, and that's something good to talk about because Forrest said, I didn't know he knew me that well. That doesn't sound like this guy just figured out the clues to get to his location. Maybe he went to a location that he knows Forrest has been to a bunch of times or something like that. So, yeah, that's an interesting connection to make. Definitely. Yeah, well, and there is a really good point that has made, and actually Cynthia has made this in private to me, um, but I, I think this is a point when two things. One, when a new searcher goes to Forest House, I think everybody just wants every little bit of information um, and, and tries to convert it to something, and it's really not anything. Um, but then also it's been said in here, they want to see who is telling the little secret um, when they do get information. Yeah, that's why Jason and I didn't do that. Um, and it was really clear really quickly who went on Facebook and, or went on YouTube and shouted it to the world. So I do think Forrest is watching and I do think that when he does give a little bit of information, it's probably not the wisest thing if you're close to him to say, hey, I'm going to shout it out on YouTube. <laughs> Um, but that happened. It, I mean, it didn't happen within my control. That was a couple months ago by another searcher that called us both out. And that's okay. I'll own, but you know, what, what happens. And I will be careful who I do lunch with in the future. There's always going to be issues. When you have uh, the creator of a treasure hunt that, that talks to certain people, There's that's always going to cause problems. And it's just the nature of people and the nature of a treasure hunt. Personally, I, I would like having a, uh, the creator of a treasure hunt email people back and talk to people. Uh, you know, the secret, Byron Press, he died in a car accident, and he was the only person who knew where those treasures are hidden. So nobody's getting anything else out of that other than the book that he wrote. But I like that Forrest talks to people and um, emails people back and, you know, is involved in the searcher community. Um, 
And when I walked into the Collected Works bookstore, he was sitting there signing books. I had no idea he was in there, so I just walked up to him and said hi. So I thought that was pretty awesome. So I think on our Which Searcher Are You t-shirt, I think we're going to have to add the 200-footer because <laughs> a lot of people think they're the 200-footer. So, <clears throat> Well, so, so here's the last two pieces. One, is there a value in knowing? Let's say if, because some people have said this and I don't quite understand it. If and only if it was verifiable 100% that the 200-footer, who it was, and you knew where they were searching, would that be valuable information? I would say, in my opinion, yes. Now, the if is the problem. I don't think the if could happen. But some people are saying, even if you knew who it was, you couldn't get there. They walk past it. You'd walk past it. If you've narrowed it from four state down to 200 feet, <laughs> I think it would be wildly informational. Again, that's just me. But am I? It's okay. I'm on glue. So, I mean, I guess I'm on glue. Is that like uh, the rest of the panel? If, again, with that if... I don't know. If you could just eliminate a state, I think is huge. But uh, Michael Ewell, our friend in Japan, he said um, this kind of discussion would be better for a blog because there's so much information. And that's true. I mean, Cynthia's blogged about it. And uh, yeah, Michael, maybe you start a blog or somebody out there that already has a website. Put up all the this is what we know and then this is what we think type thing. So yeah, it's a good idea. I need to do something oh. with cowlasers.com. I'm just not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. Well, I was going to say that's out there. Cynthia's blog yeah. outlined all of this. We're just doing it now in verbal, and so then we can get feedback. Uh, Joel, your thoughts? If you could actually identify the searcher, and that searcher had been out one time, then I don't see how that would not be helpful. In other words, I absolutely think that would be helpful information. Uh, the problem is, as Forrest conveyed this morning, that if is not really an if. That if is a you cannot. So in that sense, I think it does kind of shut down the conversation about it, which is, I think, a little bit unfortunate because it's something novel and unique. And that's why there's so many people here watching this, right? I yeah. mean, the, the, the clues are static. There's not new clues. And when you went on the Today Show, those were not really helpful clues. Right. Um, we, we're working from a, a limited set of information. When you have something that gets, you know, added in new, uh, that that's interesting to people, and that gets people thinking about things differently. And I think that's good. Um, if you now, and because Forrest isn't here saying this, but I think he would say, don't focus on the 200 footer. Go back and try to figure out where warm waters halt. That's what's going to help you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would. That's what I would. Say. Uh, don't let it detract you from trying to figure it out, but maybe use that to think maybe differently about how to try to solve the poem. And Chris Jones, you said you would never, never know for sure the 200 foot you're in is right and would always question it. Well, that's the same for where warm waters halt. I, I can come up with a warm waters halt and I can actually travel there, but I'm never going to know for sure that I'm there. All this is conjecture. I mean, we're all just kicking around different ideas. So I don't see how it's different to talk about clues than it is to talk about the 200 foot searcher. It's all just opinions. We don't even know what the nine clues are. Really, right. so, we can't agree uh, anyway. Right, can make it a little hard to discuss that. Yeah, and there's still people yeah. that think the first clue is in the first stanza, and they're entitled to their opinion. So we can't even agree on that. Yeah, well, I and some people elevation that's coming up in the chat room. So okay, we'll transition <laughs> to the last portion of tonight, which is you know some have said well, um, maybe we just round out is there any um last comments that anybody would like to make in regards and we'll also answer chat room questions um but in regards to um 200 foot searcher and all the things we talked about tonight but then you know some have said they've talked to them some have claimed some things you know where where are we at um with moving forward into 2019 so um anybody want to start that part of the discussion <laughs> yes Cynthia <laughs> Yeah, so, so I just want to end with my, um, something that Dale told me six years ago when I first got into this. He said, when you visit Forrest for the first time, you leave thinking he told you something. In my opinion, that is exactly what that was. All, all the little tidbits he said, and then he said, find this guy, find the treasure. Forrest knew 100% there was no way in hell anyone can find this guy. 
the guy doesn't even know he was the guy. Mm -hmm. Horace just confirmed this morning in the email, there is no way anyone can ever find out who it is or where they were searching. So it's just, it's if, you, if people want to keep digging into who this is, I mean, you know, more power to them. You got all winter or, or the rest of your life to do it. Um, I just think it's a rabbit hole. If you if you spend more time doing this and you do solving the poem, then to me you're really you're really barking um, you know, at the wrong tree, going down the wrong rabbit hole. If you don't already have a, a place to go search when the snow melts, work on solving the poem and re reading the book or whatever. Uh, otherwise, I, I mean, I really think it's a waste of time trying to figure out who it is. So Cynthia Dave Calvi just asked if you would post the email on your blog. I mean, you read it, but I guess people want to actually see it. It's there. <laughs> it's already it's there. there. Give your blog out so people know where to go. Give your blog address yeah. out. Oh, my! right now, do you want yeah. me to say it? Yeah. yeah. Chasing, it's chasingfencetreasure.com, no apostrophe. All, all one word, no spaces. All right. And Brian Eagle asked, I'm sorry, he was catching up. Um, was this... So July 4th, uh, Jason Dent, who's Fen Treasure Hunter and myself, went to Forest House, um, and we this was part of the conversation. Um, the next day, we had a conversation. There was four of us there, Cynthia, Sasha, myself, and Jason, um, and just about all the little bits of information that came out. Um, it kind of went dead for a little while. Um, one of the four put it out on YouTube about two months ago. Um, everything's lit fire since then, so we decided... Um, or, Mike and I decided, and since Cynthia was there, to kind of, here is the direct information. Cynthia actually took notes, I didn't know at the time, um, afterwards of the conversation, so had the specifics of every single quote that we had. Um, and so, um, you know, I don't think Forrest was giving hints. I think that's what some are trying to say, and it's unfortunate um, that that was the case. I just, I don't think there's a lot of there there, but I think there's a lot of people really interested. So, um, so we finally decided we'd come out and just say, um, here's what was said. And um, we being Mike and I, and then Cynthia said, well, since I have notes, you want me to come on and go through each piece of it? Sure. So I just didn't, I thought it would actually um, make, and I think it has um, had a lot of people upset at Forrest, and I think that's unfortunate, but I didn't put the information. That's not, I mean, it's unfortunate for Forrest, but, you know, that's, searchers get to do what they want to do. So um, we just wanted to clear the air, and that's what we did. So hopefully that answers your question. And where are we? Um, Joel? Did you have any comments, questions? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll throw this out there. Um, so Forrest, go ahead and tell me who the person was, and then I'll help you decide whether or not <laughs> you that to everyone. Uh, and I'll, I'll hold that information close unless you tell me that I can review it. Uh, I think that, you know, I'll restate it again. I think the most important thing is to go back to what Forrest has given us, right? Um, and Mike mentioned it earlier. He's, he's not told anyone anything in private that's going to help them find the chest. Uh, and that's why he came out and reiterated, this is not going to help you. Uh, otherwise he wouldn't have said it. So, and, and listening to the, the things that, uh, and, and Cynthia, thanks for taking those contemporaneous notes because that's helpful, right? Uh, it's not just conjecture. You can go back and you can look and see what you wrote when you were so much closer in time to when this happened, that's really helpful. And uh, even with those notes, there's nothing there that says, oh, this is going to, you know, give someone a shortcut or, 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 or Forrest was giving this information to these people and that's going to help them. That's just not the case. And Forrest isn't like that. He wouldn't do that. Um, I, I haven't met him personally, but we've, we've emailed back and forth. And from what I know of him, that's not what he would do. Right. And, and not what, and in my opinion, it's not what he did. Go ahead, Cynthia. Yeah. I have one more thing. So while I was while we were doing the show tonight, I was thinking about other people to put on the list. And the most likely person I've, I've decided that it is is Dick Cheney, because Cheney was on the board at Cody. He and Forrest. I don't know that I don't think Forrest referred to him necessarily as a friend, but they definitely knew each other. Um, Dick Cheney grew up in Casper. He knows Wyoming really, really well. He has a ranch. I, I think it's near Jackson now. You can email Dick Cheney at Richard Cheney 
at xvicepresident.gov. I want everybody <laughs> to email Dick Cheney and ask him <laughs> where he searched for Four Spence Treasure. And there's a new <laughs> movie out about Dick Cheney that just hit the theater. So there it. could be a clue in there. You never yeah. know. <laughs> Yeah, so so I just actually saw that movie, and every time it showed Dick Cheney fly fishing in Wyoming, I was looking for the treasure chest in the background. I did not see it. And what I heard, I haven't seen the movie yet, but I heard the the guy that he shot in the face asked him where he searched, and that's why he shot him in the face. Is that true? And, oh, that's right, <laughs> and that was in the movie. It was in the movie. We're just having some fun, everybody. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Two okay. <laughs> Two can keep a secret if one of them was the ex-vice president. All right. So uh, I'll just say this. You know, Forrest has said, my shadow isn't cast by a fool. He's never going to tell anybody anything that gets them closer to the chest. That's what I believe. That's just what I believe. But it's yeah. still fun to talk about what he actually said to certain people. And it's fun to put it out here and just try and get the record straight because everybody's got all these different ideas and, pers- you know, he's giving hints. No, he's not. But because he said it, it's still something fun to talk about, in my opinion. Um, yeah. So on Facebook, Kalazar's Grand Adventure. If anybody wants to join that, we post the videos there. Um, there'll be another Kalazar's Grand Adventure uh, next year for the silver coins. Um, this will be an armchair treasure hunt. So you will give the details on that. And then we've got some silver coins that we're actually going to hide out there for the search season next year yeah. that people yeah, can yeah, yeah. can uh, find. And again, for anybody that says, well, why would you do that? Because it's fun. Because I like treasure hunts. And it's an awesome <laughs> idea. Just like Jenny Kyle's hiding gold medallions, we've got some silver ones we're going to actually hide. It, I think it just brings the community together. You know, the more hunts, the better. It's not just about Forrest Fenn and his, uh, his treasure hunt, even though that's the biggest one and probably has the most people involved. Um, there's other things that we can do. So I just want to say thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, Merry Christmas, and I hope everybody has an awesome 2019. And go out there and find that chest. I know I'm going to do my first boots on the ground sometime in 2019. So it should be a fun <laughs> year. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so any any last for any last questions or any last words? Um, otherwise, this is going to be our, I think, our last one before the new year. And so it's been, I I have had an amazing year. It has been awesome. <laughs> I, I mean, I've been in the hunt four years, and this is the first time, this year was the first time I got to meet Forrest in the Jamie event. And I met Cynthia. I mean, <laughs> she's amazing herself. Now I know, though, about those little notes. After all, I'll have to keep that in mind. <laughs> Uh, you can keep a secret. <laughs> so it's been, oh gosh, it's been a fun year. So thank you, everybody. Um, so, so Mike Nodine just said, the moral of the story, what is said at Forrest Fenn's house should stay at Forrest Fenn's home. Exactly. <laughs> but then, of exactly. course, you people think there's some inside information going around, so oh, which there goodness. isn't. So <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. It has been fun. And so we will see you. We will definitely see you in the new year. We have lots of lineups. If you've asked to come on and uh, do the topics and things, keep them coming. Um, but, it, you know, I'm just hoping that um, we get to as many of them as we can. I'm still doing some research and some other things, but um, on some of the topics some people have thrown out. But um, I think this is going to be um, a fun, fun year for us. 2019, hopefully. Um, and come to World Series of Fan. We didn't talk a lot about tonight. We don't have time to. Um, the T-shirts and sweatshirts, we already have orders rolling in. Thank you. So that's at Fen Shirts. Um, we have a Thor, um, and it's up on Calazar. So um, this was this was fun. This was awesome. Thank you. And Cynthia, thank you so much for bringing all the facts and just laying them out. I think you were great on the, the factual piece. I think it was awesome. And Joel, thank you for all your thoughts. Um, that was great. And Do you want to just thank you? Just thank you, Mike. Joel, you want to give your Facebook group out to everybody? Yeah. Uh, no, no. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right, everybody. Have a happy and safe New Year, everybody. <laughs> happy yes. New Year, everybody. We'll see you in the New Year. No show Monday because it's New Year's Eve, but we'll probably be back New Thursday. Yeah. yeah. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.